basically when I started, I, so I had this idea in, uh, la like a year ago that I wanted to uh, resuscitate the sound of the extinct animal by uh, reconstructing their vocal tract. So when I started, I thought, okay, well, I'm going to contact some paleontologists. They're going to give me some data, and that's it. <laughs> but actually, I realized by starting my research that um, basically the experts uh, set up an enigma which was for me to solve because... Uh, the whole of the vocal tract, so from the lungs to the larynx, vocal cords and resonance cavities is made of soft tissue, so it doesn't fossilize. So basically I had to find a way to reconstruct the lost data. And also by doing the research, I realized that there's no area of science which, which is specialized in that. So there are paleontologists who study, study bones, there are surgeons, there are zoologists, but nobody actually works on the soft tissues of extinct animals. So I had to contact now, I, I think I've been in touch with more than 200 experts and create the bridges between their different areas of science to create my own data. I had to find uh, the CT scans of the closest modern relative, which is the Asian elephant, so it was a quest in itself. So finally in February I found the CT scan in Berlin. I got like 10,000 images, so I had to download a, a medical software to uh, reconstruct the, like, the 3D model of uh, of the, the Asian elephant, and from there, I could so I could see the larynx and the, the, the mouth and the, the, the trunk, and then I could extract it, and I remodeled it into the bones inside of the bones of the mammoth. I mean, yeah, many different uh, specialists were involved in that, and one of them was uh, this uh, French explorer Bernard Buick, who goes to Siberia to uh, to find um, baby and adult mammoths in the uh, Siberian permafrost. He touch and smell these animals and that's really what I wanted to do, recreate a physical presence of the extinct. Yeah, so he could also give me the scans of uh, woolly mammoth, so which is 10,000 years old and which was found a couple of years ago and also of the baby one. So I could, so this was great and this, w this is the final uh, piece. So in total it's uh, six meter long, so just the head is just what you see here is one meter long and uh, one meter fifty long and one meter high. The trunk is two meter long, and then the windpipe. So for the once I had um, the resonance cavities, I had to find a way to generate the sound which, which comes from the larynx, which was much more difficult because the lar for the larynx there are no, almost no surrounding bones left. So I met this um, surgeon who did the first larynx, tra larynx transplant in uh, California six months ago. And actually, he told me this story, which was uh, really nice. Like, this woman received the larynx from a donor. So everybody thought she will get the voice of the donor, but actually, she, she recovered her own voice, meaning that the, the specificity of the sound doesn't come from uh, the larynx itself, but from the way you shape air in your lungs and it resonates in your head. And so he's really involved in uh, larynx prosthetics. So basically, he told me, like, what we're doing now in larynx prosthetics is trying to find a way to... Um, recreate a larynx, which so, so something which would generate a sound with same function, but maybe much more simple shape. So that's what I did, and this is my result. So I had a massive membrane, which so I I talked to elephant specialists as well to get the right diameter, the right thickness, the right materials, and the right length for the windpipe. So the windpipe itself, so you see the beginning here is two meter long, and uh, the vocal cords are almost 20 centimeter. Uh, wide and they are made of five different layers of uh, latex. In our installation, I have a program valve system which switches on and off to the right breathing pattern, and then I set up the right pressure for uh, so it's eight psi for the mammoth and eight, uh, two for the Lucy. 